I'm gonna tell you in this video everything I wish I knew before I started a vending machine business. I've been doing vending machines for about two years now. I'm generating about five figures a year doing vending machines. First, vending machines are very heavy. Please do not underestimate the weight of vending machines and how big they are. Vending machines are super heavy. In my experience, drink vending machines are more heavier than snack vending machines because drink vending machines, they have like the condenser. If you plan to move the vending machine by yourself, you wanna make sure that you have a lot of help. In the past, I used U-Hauls to move vending machines, right? It came to a point where I was buying so many U-Hauls, I told myself, like yo instead of buying the u-haul i'm gonna cut u-haul and i was gonna buy a pickup truck and the pickup truck allowed me to move vending machines a lot when i started moving vending machines i made damages to places i damaged floors i damaged walls all the above right the way i suggest that you move vending machines is actually to hire vending machine movers vending machine movers they cost about 150 dollars per machine professionals that are going to come and make your life a lot easier than what you already are doing number two make sure that you buy the right vending machine for the right location you have to understand your demographic and where you're putting the vending machines in right so you don't want to buy a snack vending machine where you're supposed to put a drink vending machine and a drink vending machine where you're supposed to put a snack vending machine you want to put the right vending machine in the right location understand that different vending machines have different uses right and there's a lot of different types of vending machines in terms of drink vending machines you might have some drink vending machines that are six selections you might have some drink vending machines that are 32 selections you just have to know your demographic are there a lot of people or is there do a lot of people have different options of what they want to drink so you just have to make sure that you're buying the right vending machine right in terms of buying the right vending machine you want to make sure that you're measuring out your spaces you want to make sure that the place that you're putting the vending machine fits right also my personal opinion i like snack and drink vending machines right next to each other right put a combo vending machine in a place that's very small problems with combo vending machines is that combo vending machines you have to restock it all the time because they get empty if the location has a lot of people a lot of foot traffic a lot of people are using the vending machine then you're gonna have to refill that combo machine up multiple multiple times because when we first started we had two combo machines in a location and i was like wow we're not getting that many sales we should have had a snack vending machine and a 32 selection drink machine to fulfill that space because two combo vending machines really wasn't doing the job right bulk vending machines we had a we had a location that they bought a lot of candy right it was a bunch of kids in the location so guess what i decided to do i decided to put a triple head vending machine they're called bulk vending bulk vending machines i decided to put that in the location because i realized that there's a bunch of kids and i could i need to capitalize on right some kids might not have a dollar fifty for, for skittles but most of them have 25 cents for skittles most of them have 25 cents for gumballs so keep that in mind when you're putting vending machines in locations right people ask me all the time yo donald why don't you ever put ice cream vending machines food vending machines coffee vending machines i was told by an experienced vending machine owner someone that's been in the game for like 30 plus years they told me those machines are for like higher end locations if you're if you have a like high-end location that wants it put it in but understand this if someone unplugs your food vending machine unplugs your ice cream vending machine you lose all your product if the location loses electricity you lose a lot of products so keep that in mind when you're buying those type of vending machines stick to snack and soda vending machines because they're a lot simpler if somebody unplugs my snack machine nothing's gonna happen if somebody unplugs my drink machine vending machine not a lot of stuff is gonna happen right just keep that in mind the next thing don't buy the vending machine unless you have a location people buy vending machines and they don't have locations for the vending machine and they wonder why their business is failing you want to buy vending machines when you have the location because if you don't have the location the asset is going to sit and the asset that doesn't sit does not make any money people are like oh my goodness donald i see this deal on facebook marketplace should i get it donald this is 300 dollars for a vending machine 500 dollars for a vending machine donald should i buy it and i tell them all the time if you don't have a location don't buy it someone even told me in my comments their son bought 10 vending machines and he had no locations he stuck with 10 vending machines he stuck with all his money being lost you just want to make sure that you have the location first secure it like, you don't go buy one when someone says oh you might be able to put it in the vending machine no we, we secure it we have a contract in place we have a verbal agreement in place to say that hey i could put my vending machine in this location and the fourth thing this is going to be the last thing is make sure that you test every vending machine you don't want to buy a vending machine that you cannot test you don't want to buy a broken vending machine but ask me how do you inspect vending machines this is what you're going to do for a snack vending machine you're just going to make sure that all the coils work you're going to go a1 b1 c1 until you get every single coil of the vending machine you're going to make sure that it accepts quarters nickels dimes every form of payment if that was a car reader make sure that the car reader works also if as a car reader what you have to do you have to call the company to get it transferred into your name into your bank account and everything else for a drink vending machine you want to make sure that all the selections work as well a1 b1 c1 d1 until all the rules b2 b3 if the person doesn't let you test the vending machine please don't buy the vending machine for a drink vending machine you want to make sure that the vending machine gets cold don't get to the location and then turn on the vending machine right you want to tell the owner 15 minutes before you get there hey can you turn on this vending machine hey can you plug the vending machine in before i get there a lot of times i'll see it on facebook marketplace people will be on some junk oh i got the vending machine on the truck and i could bring it right to you i could deliver it to you also too a lot of people keep vending machines in storage units some storage units don't have any plugs they don't have any outlets in the vending machine so you're not able to test the vending machine right one guy was like yo i'm selling you a vending machine for 400 dollars. it doesn't have any plugs so what i did i did like a little creative vr it was a snack vending machine though it wasn't a drink vending machine if it was a drink vending machine i would have said no i told the guy like yo i'll give you 200 dollars because the vending machine was 400 dollars. if the vending machine 
it doesn't work, then I, I keep the vending machine, I get it for $200 and I'll fix whatever problem it has basically, right? Because I know my vending machine repair guy, he just charges me $125 and he can fix the whole machine. So I told him that, he said, good. He said, everything worked. Did like a video contract saying, stating both our sides, saying that what's gonna happen. And the vending machine ended up working, everything's fine. And the vending machine's in the location today. But recently I bought a drink vending machine and I, in a sense I got scammed. But in my mind, what I did was I went to the vending machine. I really couldn't test anything because all the boards of the vending machines was like gone, right? All it had was a like condenser. So I knew the vending machine got cold, but all the boards and stuff was missing. And my vending machine repair guy basically told me like, yo Don, this is a super old vending machine. To fix this type of vending machine, it's not worth the money. I only spent 300 for the vending machine. My vending machine got restricted for parts and he put it on my new vending machine that I just purchased, right? Even though I spent 300, I still had $300 in parts and I'm going to, I'm taking that vending machine to a scrapyard to sell it for like 50 to a hundred dollars. So I didn't really lose all my money. And also I want to say this, when you're inspecting the vending machine, I want you to ask if the vending machine is MDB compatible. MDB compatible means that it can take a car reader. So there's a difference between a 500 and $3,000 vending machine. If a deal on Facebook marketplace is too good to be true, then it's probably not the deal for you, right? If you see screenshots of vending machines, I stay away from those because I always think that they're a scam. If you see a beautiful vending machine, someone was selling it for like, let's say $300, $400, and it looks too good to be true, probably too good to be true, right? But there's always deals that you can find. Literally, I found a vending machine on Craigslist that this guy was selling for $800. I know, I think he was selling it for $1,900. And I told him I only want one vending machine when he sold it to me for $800. Right? Deals still do exist. But if the deal is too good to be true, don't buy it. If you're getting a very nice location, sometimes it's best just to spend a little more money. Because I try to buy my vending machines from $500 to $1,000. Recently, I bought a vending machine for $1,700. The drink vending machine in that location, it cost $3,000, right? But that location is making upwards of $1,000 a month. So I'm able to get my money back super, super quickly. And I tell people, when you buy a vending machine, make sure you can get the money back in six months. Don't go buy a $5,000 vending machine and then place it in a location that makes $100 a month. You feel me? So you guys have to make it make sense. I didn't mention this, right? Questions that I want you to ask the, the people when you're buying the vending machine, ask them what's wrong with the vending machine? Why are you selling? And make sure that they give you adequate reasons. If they're telling you like, oh, I'm selling this vending machine because I got a new vending machine at a location. I like when people say that. That means it was somewhere and it was working. It makes me trust the person more in a sense, right? So it's like when you're buying a car and someone's like, oh, I just bought a newer car. So I'm just trying to get rid of my old one right it means that they were driving the car and everything was good it's the same thing as like a vending machine but you still want to inspect the vending machine you still want to make sure that everything is good right and if there's anything wrong with the vending machine you could always bring the price down for example if somebody says hey my bill validator doesn't work the bill validator is what the money goes to you could be like i know a bill validator at cost me 150 dollars so take 150 dollars off the price to buy a new bill validator hey coin mech the coin mech is what you put the change in and how people get back their change if they tell you that doesn't work you could be like i know on ebay they sell them for about like 150 dollars as well i could i'm gonna take off 150 dollars right so you just want to take those prices off right find a vending machine repair person in your city in your state type it in on facebook marketplace type it in on google and someone will come my guy charges me 125 dollars and it comes and fixes everything people ask me all the time donald vending machines need a lot of repair and maintenance everything you can probably fix on a vending machine there's videos that show you in great details of everything you need to know on how to fix vending machines what to replace what to take out and everything is fairly simple if you watch the video so you don't have to overcomplicate it and i just wanted to film this video really quickly and i just wanted to shoot it on my phone i want to shoot it in front of my fancy camera to show you guys i'm a regular person and you could do it too you can start your own vending machine business today if you want to hopefully this video saves you two years worth of time and it teaches you everything that i wish i knew before i started my vending machine business right hopefully this video hits home a lot of people put in my comments don't know how do you do the taxes and what permits do you need and whoop -de whoop. I, I try to answer your questions as much as possible but you have to understand a lot of you guys live in different states and you live in different cities and some of your cities and states have different policies i don't really want to go into like, the taxes of the business because like I don't, i'm not like a financial advisor i can make a video explaining on how i do my tax i can't tell you what to do if you understand what i'm saying i can only give you what i do i'm probably gonna make another video on how to like, structure your business how to start your llc and stuff because i use ink file to to buy my llc get my ein number i have paypal as my business bank account so i could make a video on how to structure your business on what i did not telling you what to do because this is not financial advice if you watch this far put growth in the comments but two exclamation points growth with two exclamation points but this is everything dsk and i'm gonna see you guys on the next video